Hello everyone, this is Country Yellow bringing you another video in Star Trek Online. In today's video, I decided to just go over what I feel are, are the best tanks empirically um, inside of the game. And so to go over this, I'll first go over my biases before I even go over the science tanks and other tanks in the game that I feel are the best in the entire game. Just in general, then I'll go over the console sets that are going to heavily influence these rankings. I'm not going to go over those those tanks in the game. I will go over then what I feel are the best promotion pack ships in the game. And then go over what I feel is just the best ship in the entire game. Feel free to see the time links in the description. I'm going to jump to all, all those different points if there's one thing or another that you feel is more important to you I mean, in, inside of the game. So first off, from my general biases, I obviously am a tank player, so my focus is on tanking and survival, not on the overall DPS potential of a particular starship. There will be cannon-oriented tanks in this list, but I mean the focus is going to be on tanking with these starships. Additionally as well, Command and Track Fire will have a big prevalence of starships in this tank list. That won't be an element in the science tanking list, however, and also the Lieutenant Commander Science Bridge Officer um, layout is going to be have a much less weighted um, factor inside of this list. When I tried to cover this last year, my big emphasis was almost like, does it have a tank of science? If not, then I'm, I'm going to lower it over every single other tank in the game, which isn't really particularly fair to do. So in this list, I'm not doing that. Again, there won't be any price limits on, on, on these starships themselves. Therefore, we're going to be assuming they already are going to have the optimal like starship trades and space trades and things for, for these um, tanking builds. Additionally, as well for me personally, I love um, on the command bridge officer abilities and miracle worker bridge officer abilities. So therefore, those seedings with those bridge officer abilities are going to have a, have a higher placement than what they probably otherwise would. And additionally, with all that all that said, there's going to be a lot of exclusive strong console sets that will heavily, heavily influence the very tippity top of, of the best tanks inside the game. Unlike, unlike DPS starships in the game that, you know, just the bridge officer layout and the console layout can tell you, you know, like 99% of what you need to know. For tanking, if there's a really strong survival console on it, that can actually by itself tip the scales and make that a better tank. It's why some of the tippy tops of these tanking lists are going to have some starships that you might not expect if you haven't watched some of my lists before. If you have, then there's a couple of ones that you should probably be expecting at this point. When it comes to the strong console sets themselves, my favorite one obviously is the flagship technology set. It is from the tier six flagship um, set, or the, 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 the nine starships in the game that is probably one of the best deals of all the starships in the game. Um, unfortunately, one of the consoles is not available from the C-Source set itself, the Timeline Stabilizer. It's from the Krenum Science Vessel. So if you didn't unlock that for your, for your account when that event was going on, you're gonna have to use Phoenix Prize Pack to get it for each, every single one of your characters that is gonna be tanking. Which is a bit unfortunate. Um, the Flash, Tactical Computer, and Dactyl Emergency Systems are both pretty strong in their own right. The Dining Wave of Emitter isn't. However, if you don't have a Timeline Stabilizer and you want the three piece bonus for tanking, um, you can debate whether the Dining Wave of Emitter having it on your ship for that three piece bonus is worth it to you. I'd probably lean towards yes, but that still just depends upon your particular build. Obviously, the most optimal way to go is to have these three consoles. If, if you look at Florian's build on SGR Reddit, he uses a tier 6 Odyssey, and he uses these three consoles because they're all really good. Initially, the set is really good, so it's one of the best sets in the game for tanking. Again, that, that, that console is really, really bad. Our second console here on the set is the 31st Century um, set. This is with some ships from the 31st Century Subship Bundle, which are really, really good. You have a Temporal Raider that has a Battle Cloak. You have a really strong Science Vessel, and you have a really strong Dreadnought Cruiser with that has access to dual heavy cannons and four tactical consoles. So it's not a bad ship for DPS either. Um, when it comes to this set, why I like it a lot is because it has a two-piece console set that's really good for science, and a two-piece console set that's really good for energy tanking as well. Because you have a console from the Science Vessel, that, that, that's great. You have a console from the Raider that's really great for energy. And then you have the console from the Cruiser, which is one of the, if not the best, taunt consoles in the entire game. You have an AOE taunt of up to five enemies for a few seconds. 
and then af after that ends, you get a bonus to all of your damage as well, which can allow you to keep the threat on you longer. Additionally, the two-piece also gives you some extra HP, and then if you're doing a direct energy damage to, um, way, you get additional damage for that as well. This is all extremely good, and it's something that, well, it's it's why the emphasis on ships are going to be so high for these particular ships right here. Another set, which is very noteworthy here, is the Enhanced Weapon System Efficiency Set. This is the one with the Blade of Hazard Shielding, that is for the Roman Republic. And, and this synergizes well with one of the strongest survival consoles that is a passive console in the game, which is called Shield Absorber from the Generator. This thing just adds an extra proc to your weapons that, when the proc goes off, the damage that your weapon deals um, heals your shields for 200% of the damage that they deal. Which is pretty substantial when you add that with the um, trait from rep reputations that your that your outgoing damage can also heal your shields or heal your hull as well. It's very synergistic in, in that you you can basically have a DPS oriented build that also allows you to survive decently well as well. This is this is the biggest draw in my opinion for someone who wants to survive easier to actually play a a warbird inside of the game. Additionally, whenever you use, use the two-piece here with this thing plus that, you get a negative 25% weapon power cost reduction to your starship, which basically means you, you can actually afford with Rinse Weapon Cycle, which if you're using a Blade Master, you already have that with this ship. It means that you can actually do the competitive three-piece space set with the engines, the shields, and also with the warp core to be able to have an insane um, three-piece survival with that particular space set. Again, because that's just part of things every single ship can have, we're not going to be talking about that in, in this video. Another set which is extremely strong, is something that I've overlooked for a while, is the Dominion console set. This is an extremely strong PvP 3P set. However, the big thing for this is this set can be used on any Gemidar starship, including the new Gemidar Light Bow Cruiser and all the Gemidar Vanguard starships from the big Gemidar Vanguard on expansion pack with Victory's Life. And these consoles are pretty powerful. Now, Dominion Defense Screen and Enhanced Dominion Coordination Protocol are both pretty powerful in their own right. Enhanced Dominion Command Interface isn't particularly as strong, but it's still decent, especially whenever you add the three-piece console set to this. It actually is, is pretty strong, too. I, I tested this out because I do have one character that has the tier 6 versions that, that bring out all three of these consoles, and I've tried it with the Jonar Vanguard ship. It performs pretty well for tanking. And so um, the tank versions of those ships, the Dreadnought Cruiser and the Jonar Vanguard warship, are both going to be pretty high in their respective categories. Whenever we get to those in this video. The Nikula Puzzle Technology set is also a pretty strong one, but the set itself isn't that strong. It, it's, it's decent if you want a two-piece with the Plasma, um, damage plus the plasma console to basically have a vulnerability look at your console that's not in your tactical console slots. The bigger thing though is the time slip ability off of the science vessel. It's basically the Nikola Temporal Personal Shield but in space. And it's pretty powerful. In fact, in most PvP battles, battles that I've ever fought in, this has consistently been one of the consoles that has been banned from the PvP battle. This is just one of the most annoying things to fight. It also gives you passive crit severity as well. So if you're having this on a science vessel, which you're already going to have over 50% over critical chance. So the critical severity just adds to your science bill is hitting even harder. Now, stable and stable platform is okay if, if you want something like the gravity induction platform from the Mercury Worker Specialization, but it's not something that's particularly noteworthy. When it comes to this set from, from the Breen, the Resident Dissipation Matrix is, is the one big one here. It gives you some reduction, um, damage reduction to shields, recharges bridge off your powers, and it gives you a bonus to shield heals as well, which is pretty nice. Unfortunately, this console doesn't come with the Breen Dreadnought Cruiser, so this is only really good if you're someone who, ha who has every single Breen um, Starship in the game. If you don't and you're, tr and you're wanting to use Phoenix Prize Packs to get all these ships, it's not really worth it in my opinion. Just as an FYI to you all. Another console I think is very noteworthy is the Chronotype Particle Cider. Um, this is from the Sagittarius um, ship from the Sea Store. 
and it's it's a pretty nice team um, survival console, frankly. Um, it's nice. It's not as good as the Chronos stuff, but I mean, it's still a, a nice um, console in, in its own right. Our honorable mention, of course, has to go to the War of Repair Ship because it's a self-res console. I don't know if on PlayStation and Xbox if this thing automatically goes off whenever you whenever you, you die and you have this on one of your Voth ships. Probably should if you have it, but on, on PC you do have to activate the ability. But it is super nice. You go to full HP, full shields, and you get a, a significant amount of, of shield resistance for 10 seconds along with a ton of power whenever you come right back. So it's, it's a really nice console. Unfortunately, we don't have any tier 6 Voth ships to really like show this console off really well in advanced and elite queues in the game. Otherwise, I mean, it, this would otherwise definitely be in probably a top 5 of any of the tank lists in, in this video. But I, I will be excluding all tier 5 ships from this from the list, so you're not going to see the buff ships. Our first se section is going to be science tanks. And as we have three sections, we're going to have over 10 ships in each section. I'll be trying to go over these as quickly as I can. So as for things I'm not considering, obviously I'm not including any, any tier 5 starships. So the Sea Star Science Destroyers, the Voth Science Vessels are both not going to be included. I'm also not going to be including starships that don't have a secondary deflector. I do have one exception to that that I, that I will get to later on in this list. I also will not be including the Mirror Crossbelt Science Destroyer because the trade and the console strictly off of that ship, plus the Bridge Officer CD, is screaming to play it as, as a DPS science I mean, science slash energy based starship and not as a tank, frankly. You'll use to use the regular crossfield if you if you if, if, if you really want a tank. And also we're not including the Sonic Collector Science Dreadnought because I really hate that starship and I have no real way to really fairly compare it. When I, when I really have a strong bias against that starship. So because of that, I am excluding that from, from this list. It probably should be it probably should be decently high on the list around the place of like where, where the Kratom Science Dreadnought is, but I just don't like this starship, so it's not in the list. Our honorable mention for this list is going to be the Sea Star Multi Mission Science Vessels. These are very solid ships. In fact, on my main Romulan science tank, I do use um, this um, Romulan um, tactical um, the tactical version of the multi-mission science explorer. Um, so these 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 are still solid ships. You can definitely tank with these as long as you have a have, have a proper build to synergize with the various stuff on this. Not as strong as some of the other ships in this list, but it's still very noteworthy. And these are ships you can buy straight off off the sea store, and they have their end game stats with them. Plus, they also have, have a hangar base as well because there's a lot of people who like hangar 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 base nowadays. Our number ten in this list is the Sphere Builder Multi Mission Science Vessel. It's not labeled as a multi-mission science vessel, but as I explained in my Starship Classes video, it basically is a multi-mission science vessel inside of the game. It just doesn't have the name for it. This is from the Lobby Store, which means, by the way that our player economy works on, on the exchange, it is one of the more, it's one of the generally cheaper ships on, on the exchange. It still is decently priced because it is one of the better DPS science ships in the game. But because of its raw stats, if it happened at 1.5 1.15 hull, and at 1.45 shields, it's still a, a, a good starship. Its unique console is nice for damage, but you know it really is up to you. I personally like the Herc Multiple Size Vessel a little bit better because it has a higher hull. And as I've said in other videos, once you get above a 1.15 shield ratio, as a tank, it doesn't quite matter as much. I mean, obviously, when it, the higher the shields, the better it is because your your shield ratio also impacts your passive shield regeneration, not just your shield shield capacity. Just one of those cool things about stats that most people don't even look look at whenever they look, look, look at a starship. Also, it has a Lieutenant Commander command, so that I'm obviously going to rate that higher because it's it's got a Command Bridge Officer ability. Number A is the Cardassian Science Dreadnought. It's here because it's, it's from the Sea Store, which means you don't have to worry about having buying it and only having one character be able to use it. You buy it once and all of your characters across your entire account can use use this thing. If you're in a if you're in a tank on a science character, this is probably one of them that I would highly recommend to actually consider to use just because it's fairly cheap to acquire and it's still a nice solid ship. I mean it's not as good as one of the other ships in this list, but we will get to that in just a moment. 
My number seven is Paradox Temple Dreadnought. It's I basically consider this just the Cardassian Science Dreadnought, but it has better stats. It's basically what it comes down to with, with the ship. And also, you have to get it from the, the low buy store instead of um, through the sea store. I personally like the look of this one a little bit better, but um, I mean, I, I do know a lot of people really like the bridge off of the, the Cardassian ships too, which definitely is something to, to keep in mind as well. Not all ships have a custom bridge. Number six is definitely one that most people wouldn't put on this list, like at all. This is the Sona Command Science Vessel, and it is the fastest command vessel in the entire game. Most of the time when you think of, of command vessels, you think of really slow, bulky cruisers. And this is not a slow, bulky cruiser. It's a fast science vessel. And so, like, this thing has its own weird niche in terms of, like, who's actually going to want to fly this thing. The Sona Bridge has its own custom bridge, but, I mean... A lot of the older bridges haven't really been updated to modern standards, and so it's going to really look lackluster if you actually look, look at the bridge through modern eyes. I really, really like the bridge after seating, though. It's got a very high stuff in, in command, which also means if, if you're wanting a commander command seat in PvP, this is probably the best vessel to go with, frankly, because it's a really fast vessel, and you typically really value mobility when it comes to PvP. It doesn't have a battle cloak, but a lot of science ships don't, so... Just a thing that you have to keep in mind. Our number five is the Talis Temporal Warbird. This is the only ship in this list that, in, in, the, in the science list, that doesn't have a secondary deflector. We will cover this in more depth towards the end of this video. But to keep, just keep in mind, for a Warbird, this ship is ridiculously good when it comes to science DPS. Our number four in this list is the Corenum NRX Science Dreadnought. It's another ship from Permopax. Um, despite the fact that it, it is here. Um, basically, the unique thing about this ship is that it's a very durable science vessel with really high stats, plus it has a lance ability built into it, which is pretty nice. But uh, whenever you compare this versus a lot of other ships that have been released more modernly, um, a lot of the old unique consoles that were that, that the Krenum could use have started to get outpaced by other consoles that could allow you to tank better or do more damage. So. Unless you really want a science vessel with a lance ability, there are better options for DPS or for tanking inside the game nowadays. It still has great passive stats though, so if, if you're wanting like really high shield regen plus a nice hole to back it up, this is still a decent option too. The one that I think is a bit better and the most well-rounded of all the science starships out there is the Crossbow Class Science Spearhead, which I guess makes sense i mean it is the um basically the not really the flagship but it's on um, the main ship of of star trek discovery so I, I guess it makes sense that cryptic wants to make that ship really good so people go to the exchange and, and, and buy the starship but it's, it's got a really high hold ratio and still a very good respectable shield ratio um this is in the science spearhead and science destroyer category for starfield or starship subclasses this really should just be called a science warship. If we're transferring, you know, the tactical names for Star just over, over to science, it should be a warship instead of spearhead. But um, with that all said, I mean, it's 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 an all-around great starship. Um, the the two starships that, that beat this in my personal list are starships that have unique consoles that make their ships overall better. It's not because their ships are inherently better; it's because their their ships plus their consoles combined are better than the starship. If Cryptic ever makes it so that all ships can use consoles from every starship in the game, then I would say that this would actually be the best science vessel in the entire game, for, at least when it comes to tanking. Our number two is the Nak Nakul science vessel, and it's all because of the temporal distress beacon that not, not only can be used with this ship, but actually comes with this ship itself. So to get the ship off the exchange, starship stats are what you would expect for a science ship, but it's got a built-in battle cloak, plus it's got the temporal distress beacon. So it's a nice, strong science vessel. It also is very fast. You can also use this in PvP. And as I said earlier, it's because of this console, plus of how good a lot of the not cool ships are in PvP, that this is one of the most commonly banned consoles in PvP. Also, this is a science vessel that can use all the cannons too, which is nice. 
the number one ship in this list should be pretty well expected. The thing that tops all my science lists seems to be the Eternal Temple of Multimus of Science Vessel. With a 31st Century Console set, plus its passive stats aren't that bad either. Unfortunately, this is a ship that isn't quite as good in PvP just because it's not as fast. Um, but it's still okay. Um, and from time to time, I, I do see people using the Eternal in, in PvP. A lot of science vessels just don't go very fast, and so it's something to be expected by a lot of science ships in the game. So, unless you're going with, with a scout ship from like the colony or something, a lot of ships are going to be around this speed anyway. It's a very well-balanced ship. Its looks are a little lackluster. I mean, so is the not cool science vessel, but, you know, it's just really up to you in terms of personal preferences. So for our second section, we go with the 5-3 energy tanks. So these are these are ships that are based upon energy damage for doing their threat and things that have five weapons in the front and three weapons in the rear. So with this all, this all, all said, we aren't limiting a lot of starships. We aren't including any non-tier six starships, but when I was making the list, there weren't, there weren't any, any tier five starships that really seemed to make the list, in my opinion. I won't be including the, the Borgon's Dreadnought Cruiser that has a 3-5 layout, and I, I will also not be including the Elagia the Elagi Sheshar Dreadnought Cruisers, because outside of its looks or the Trey for Torpedo builds, this isn't a starship that I feel is worthwhile to buy from promotion packs anymore. For a while I felt this way. Feel free to look through these ships and see if you want, you want to disagree with me on that. Our, one of our honorable mentions has to be the Not Cruel Battle Cruiser, just because this is a sh this is another ship that can use the time slip console from the science vessel. It's not particularly that oppressive. I mean, its stats are fine if you want to be a battle cruiser, and of course, the, the two piece with the other plasma console allows you to basically have essentially a fourth tactical console. But it's four tactical consoles, but you don't have command track fire, so you're going to be hurting a bit on threat, frankly, if you're if, if you're going to use use the starship. It's still completely doable, um, but it's not particularly ideal for tanking. Our other other mention that I think is a bit better if you're going for the battle cruiser route is to use the fleet mirror War worker battle cruisers. You get four plus one tactical consoles, so despite the fact that you don't have command track fire, you do have five tactical consoles, so you can still bring back up a lot of threat with this ship. Plus, you have Commander Mirror Worker, and with Mirror War War Worker powers, you can do a lot of cruel damage and survival with these ships. The, K the KDF version also gets a battle cloak along with them, but the Federation version gets a second skin if you buy the Sea Store version. Klingon ones don't, so that's the downside for playing Klingon. For the real number 10 in this list, it's going to be the Cardassian Intel Flight Deck Cruiser. Um, it's basically a pretty decent cruiser in the game. There's really nothing else fancy to say about this thing. It's just a regular flight deck cruiser. If we're talking about ones that's a little bit better for flight deck cruisers, you would go to the fleet flight deck cruisers. Let me find which version that you have, whether it's the Federation one, the Klingon one, or the Romulan one. Federation and Klingon ones are literally just the exact same ship, it's just they have a different skin on them. And the Romulan version has, has a battle cloak with, with the cost of having a little bit lower hull. Um, it does have four type of consoles and a bit better bridge after CD, in my opinion, when it comes to threat as well as for defensive stuff with, with that Lieutenant Commander um, command seat there. Um, you, 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 you can make this a decent torpedo build too, but in this list we're obviously talking about tanking. Um, the one I value a little bit more personally, a lot of people will disagree with me on this, but I really like pilot seats as well. And this is one of the two ships that I've been able to find that has both command track fire and a pilot seat, which is super, super nice to find. And the walker is one of those two. As this, I obviously have to put it in this list. I felt that it was most appropriate to put it about here. It's a fairly well-rounded cruiser. It doesn't have a ton of teeth on it, um, but it, it but it is still a, a, a decent ship inside the game. It's also got a, a nice survival console, but since we're talking about ships without any limits whatsoever in terms of pricing, you can easily put that console on, on any other starship, especially if you want to be super annoying in PvP. Our number seven is the Atlas. And um, I, I had some questions about this, I think, a week or two ago, asking, like, 
um, where I would put the atlas in a general tank list and I, I would put it here. Um, this is a this is still a very strong durable tank inside the game. The real the reason why it's as expensive as it is on the exchange is because it has the DPRM console on this starship. Like this is the starship if you're a Federation captain that the DPRM console comes from. Because of that, it, it is priced as high as as it is. It's still a, a, a decent platform for DPS as well as for tanking builds. It has the classic three lieutenant seats instead of, you know, your commander, double lieutenant commander, then lieutenant and ensign, which is more common nowadays, just so you have a higher um, rankings for your bridge officer abilities. We'll get to that as well with the temporal light cruiser. Um, yeah, a lot of people literally just buy this ship to have the console that, that they'll slot onto to some other better starship. Like, for instance... The Kelvin Timeline Intel Dreadnought Cruiser, also known as the Vengeance, um, inside of the game. You can easily just call this a TOS Dreadnought Cruiser that's from the Kelvin Timeline, and it's a little bit bigger and a little bit more powerful. That's basically just what it comes down to. Um, it's, got, it's got Intel Temper Operative instead of, instead of some command stuff, but it's really the fact that it's got the two Lieutenant Commander with Lieutenant and Ensign. Is why this thing is just better it's also a little bit faster too but that's really what, what it comes down to it's just the atlas but slightly better if you're only gonna buy one of those two you'd obviously buy the atlas to get the dpr but i mean the kelvin timeline is much much cheaper typically on the exchange my number five here for a five three ship is gonna be the valwar miracle worker juggernaut it's the best dps oriented juggernaut inside the game it's not the best tanking juggernaut in the game but it is but it is the best dps oriented juggernaut inside the game in terms of the bridge off seating the only way that this could have actually been improved frankly um is if you added more specialist seats or if you made the ensign science and then made this a lieutenant universal so you could have made that into another engineering seats so you could have done two lieutenant seats or two lieutenant bridge officer abilities for ox to bat so you could have had a higher emergency power to weapons frankly in here Outside of that, not really too much more they could have really done to make the bridge off scene better on this ship. You have six tackle consoles. Um, and then if you're a tank, you will fill in the rest of these with a lot of survival ones and then a couple of um, consoles from the fleet to help with threat generation. Ideally, you'd also make this Polaron so you can, you can make the Juggernaut Ray do a lot more damage because the Juggernaut Ray on this ship scales with, with Polaron. But yeah, outside of that, we'll go ahead and move on. Our number four in this list, in my opinion, is the Miracle Worker Flight Deck Cruisers. I, I put these a smidget just below the Temporal Light Cruiser, the, the TOS Enterprise. Um, more of just because this is this ship right here doesn't have three Lieutenant Commander seats. As you can see in the next slide, this ship has three Lieutenant Commander seats with, a, with, a, with its Commander Temporal Operative. This one here has a Commander with two Lieutenant, two lieutenant Commanders, a Lieutenant, and an Ensign. I really, really like that Lieutenant Commander Universal Command personally for the way that I like to tank inside the game. However, I know a lot of you like, might like this ship a little bit better. Basically, the way that I would think about this ship, I, I will go into more detail on, on this later in a non-biased review. Obviously, the first time when I did this video, I was extremely biased on it. But basically, this is a fleet Merkle Worker Worker Battle Cruiser that is down one tactical console to end down two do down the access to use dual heavy heavy cannons for the um, benefit to have command extract fire and two hangar bays additionally has some pretty powerful phaser beam arrays inside the game the kdf1 also has kdf versions of those beams except um, when it comes to disruptors we already have spiral disruptors in the game that are pretty close to about the same in terms of comparable damage so the Federation one is, is a lot more powerful, in my opinion. However, in this list, obviously, this is the highest ranked KDF-specific tank in this category. So, there is that. And the Temporal Light Cruiser is just right here as well. Stats are a little bit lower, but it's got a better turn rate for lower impulse. I personally prefer flying this one. Our, our number two in this list is one that you probably wouldn't expect. It's the Gemini Vanguard warship. 
part of why I had this as honorable mention in one of my other videos recently was because this thing can use the Dominion console set. If you don't have any price stipulations upon making a starship, find those three tier six Geminar ships off, off of the exchange and slap them on this ship. Gives you a surprising amount of durability in, 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 in PVE, which can allow you to tank a lot easier on this particular starship. You also have Vanguard Wingman to help give you an initial keel if, if, if you need it. And the purge obviously is pretty optimal for a DPS oriented build. And its stats are, are pretty strong as well. So in my opinion, it definitely deserves this spot, but there is one starship that is a bit better. And that is the Juggernauts from the Sea Store. The Sea Store flagship Juggernauts. Um, technically they're called flagship Dreadnought Warbirds, but when you, if, if, you, if you had to go back in my uh, video talking about the different starship classes and subclasses, the Sea Star Flies of Dreadnought Warbirds most closely fall into the Juggernaut class, frankly, in, in, inside of, of the Tactical class. They're only available to the Realm of the Republic, so if you're not a Realm Republic captain, the best one for you for this 5-3 class for tanking is going to be the Warship. But um, the reason why this is great is because not only do you get the 3-piece flagship set, but you, you're able to use a 2-piece weapon systems efficiency set that's exclusive to Warbirds. So you've got two um, pretty niche but pretty powerful sets, which allows this thing to tank really, really well. Plus, when you add the three really common tanking consoles of the GPRM, Reiter Structural Capacitor, and Programmatic Field Projector, that is 5 plus 3, which is 8, which means you're down to three remaining consoles left on, on the ship for your tactical seats, or, tact or tactical consoles, which means it basically doesn't matter what flagship juggernaut that you choose. So basically, if you're going with this route, just go with the one with that gives you the more optimal bridge off receiving for your own, own, own personal choice. I personally like the engineering one the best, but um, some people might like the tactical or the um, or the science one better. Now, for the last part of this video, we'll go into the energy tanks that are built around broadsiding. Whenever you have four weapons at the front and four in the rear, it more likely means you should be broadsiding with um, with with beam rays on. On these tanks it's just the way that they work inside the game now obviously in this i'm not going to be including the the tier 5 u voth um cruisers you know they definitely could easily be honorable mentions because of the voth self-res console i also will not be using the c store command battle cruisers because as people have been realizing on the str reddit recently over the past couple months is that those are are the best platforms in the game for mine oriented builds i personally thought that they were worthless but the people were realizing hey if you want to do a, a mine DPS build, they are the best ones in, in the game for that. So if you have those and want to do mines, feel free to go for it. I'm, I'm not a captain that, that does mine oriented builds, so I, I can't really judge that personally. Um, feel free to talk to other other people in the game that have their own mine, mine builds in the game. I'm also not going to be judging the Zell Heavy have, have Cruiser because I just don't like flying that starship. I have flown it a bunch on several characters to get the invincible trait on, on a couple of them. It's just never been enjoyable for me. So, because I have other bias against it, I have no real um, un unbiased or at least relatively um, stable way of analyzing the ship. And so I am just ex excluding it from consideration in, in this list. Our honorable mention obviously has to go to the Cardassian Keldon Cruiser. It, it's a very solid ship. It's definitely one of Dark Blade's favorite ships to, um, to tank with. Um, back in the day, you go back a couple years, and most cruisers didn't have a 1.3 shield ratio. But that was one of the special things about this ship. We're starting to get to the point that with the gradual things with Cryptic of you know just trying to make a lot of ships just have much higher space stats so that they they are more enticing for people to fly. The specialness of this ship is starting to become less and less prominent, frankly, in, inside the game. It's still definitely respectful. It's got the minimum hull ratio of what you what you want. It's got very high shields. It's got good turning and impulse. Its bridge offer seating is also completely fine as well. It's also got a lance. Um, if you if if you keep the base console on this ship, the lance is still great to have on there if you're going to be doing a disruptor oriented build on the ship. Otherwise, it might not necessarily be as good to keep it. But that's just my opinion. 
Number 10 on this list is the Fleet Advanced Light Cruiser. It's the other ship in this video that has a, a pilot seat with command and fracture fire. In my opinion, the Advanced Light Cruiser bundle was really designed around trying to give players a cruiser that could compete in PvP. I don't feel that the cruiser is frankly fast enough um, to really compete that well in PvP, but I mean, it's definitely getting closer to what you would ideally want. It's got a Lieutenant Commander Universal Pilot, which in my personal way of liking to play the game with the pilot abilities, I'd like to make this a science for just the gravity wall at the Lieutenant Commander slot, and then having two pilot abilities in the Ensign and Lieutenant slot. You definitely can easily make this a tactical or whatever you want with having, with having some pilot abilities and other things there too. You can also make this in an engineering, so you, do, you can do ox to bat a lot easier on this ship. Totally up to you. Number nine is the Kelvin Enterprise. Of course, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna list this thing in the video because this is still one of the better tanks in the game. It's got Command Engineering Command, which is really nice for tanking. Yes, you gotta build the inspiration, but the, the team wide bonuses that you give to your team are all pretty substantial. Team wide firing cycle haze is definitely welcome. Of course, the U.S. captains just want someone else to have the commander command and give that haste to them so that their DPS is higher, which is totally fine, totally reasonable. Um, it, it's bridge operating is also pretty well balanced too. You have the ELO 10 science temper operative, so you, you can actually use all that for temper operative stuff and, and, and ignore your science seat altogether if, if you so choose. Um, however, the one I think is a little bit better, and I've talked about this in a previous comparisons video, the sticks, which is able to all um, factions and not just the Federation that the Kelvin Enterprise is. The Styx is basically just an, an improvement over the Kelvin Enterprise. So um, it's actually pretty nice. It's got Dreadnought Cruiser Commands, dual of cannons, one hangar bay, so got the inspiration abilities of a commander engineering command seat that would have. It's also got at least command universal um, intelligence. So, so you can have a lot more bite on this starship as well. It's a little bit bulkier. Um, it's also got decent hangar pets. Obviously, some of the more dear ones today are still better than those ones, at least to my understanding. There is someone on SDR Reddit who, who is testing a lot of the hangar pets, so feel, feel free to just go ahead and talk to him if you're curious about how, how good certain hangar pets are inside the game. Our number seven is going to be the Sea Store Miracle Work Worker Cruisers. And especially going with, with the tactical versions, as, as, as in my opinion, for a DPS-oriented build, the tactical ones are, are the best ones to go with. Not just for having five tactical consoles, but I personally feel that the Bridge After C is the best on a tactical one. Definitely the science one is most well-rounded. Um, you can easily do a, a beam build on that, or you could do a science build on the, on the science version of the Marine Worker, Worker, Worker Cruisers. As I say right here, you, in my opinion, you need to have special unique consoles to beat this starship. And this is only seven in, in this list here for, for this uh, subsection. So there's, there's a lot of 4-4 of four, four cruisers that have unique consoles to beat this. So number six is going to be the Sea Store flagship battle cruisers. Yeah, we have battle cruisers that are actually in, in the top 10 for regular 4-4 four, four tanking. Like, what it really comes down to is the three-piece flagship set is really just that good. That it beats a lot of other, other tanks inside the game. Um, there are not a lot of universal consoles in the game that, that can really match what this three-piece set can actually do. Um, in, in both DPS as well as survival given to your ship. It's, it's why I, I value this so highly. Florian really likes it a lot on SGRED as well because of this. Of course, he uses a different ship, which is higher up in, in this list, but um, the stats are all pretty respectful for, for these ships as well. The downside that you get for the battle cruisers over the regular cruisers for the Federation is that you lose command extract fire to typically get an extra console for every single one of the variants, plus the plus access to dual heavy cannons, which which means for the average player base that, that do not tank, the KDF versions are just an improvement over the Federation ones. For basically the exact same stats. Number five on this list is going to be the Breen Dreadnought Cruiser. As I said before, the Resident Dissipation Matrix is a pretty nice um, survival console. It does not come from this ship though. You have to get a different Breen ship to get that console. 
So unless you've unlocked a lot of the Breen Starships, I would not recommend going to Phoenix Prize Packs just to get this Starship and, and tank, with, tank with, with with her. But it's still very respectful for job for seeing. You have the Tank for Universal Command, which is probably partly why I'm ranking this as highly as I am, because I really love command seats. And its console s stuff is, is respectful too. It's not you know the most oppressive in, in the world, but it's still decent overall too. Number four on this list is the fleet Sagittarius, Temporal Cruiser. I'm probably saying that wrong, but the reason why is because of the Chronotime Particle Cider. This is from the Sea Store version of, of the Sagittarius. The Starship trait from that ship is the is, is a trait that I really really love a lot called Shield Overload, which is extremely strong in PvP. Now it's not as desirable in PvE just because the meta for a lot of of DPS and tanks inside the game is to have emergency power to engines and emergency power power to weapons. So, because of the because of wanting to get more damage and more mobility, there isn't really a spot for a lot of builds to have emergency power to shields as well. In PvP, it's much easier. Emergency power to shields and emergency power to engines is, is a lot easier to put on on some of those builds, especially because in PvP, the focus is to survive. Because if, if you can't survive, then you can't deal the damage you need to defeat the enemies that you're trying to fight. That are all basically as good as you are. Which is not the way in PvE. It doesn't have four tactical consoles, but the special console from the Sea Star sh ship that could be put on, on the fleet version is still a very nice, respectable console. What I will say though, number three, I do not like this starship. I've said that before. But... I, I cannot deny when you put the three piece Dominion console set on this thing, it is a beast when it comes to tanking. It is it, it is pretty strong. Because you've, you've got your Vanguard Wingman plus a Hangar Bay um, plus that stuff, plus you know, the regular standard stuff for tanking DPR and Promoter, Rear Structural Capacitor, those types of things. It tanks very well. It does. Um, you usually want to have the NC Universal P another tactical. It's it's a very nice um, ship when you have the Dominion console set on it. If you don't have the Dominion console set on it, then it's 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 a bit lackluster for a um, tanking cruiser in the game. In my personal op opinion, I obviously still if I actually showed you all the actual top ten. The Vanguard warship would, would, would definitely outrank this one. But this is still a respectable tank inside the game. Just that it costs a whole lot of money. Of, well, of in-game resources money at least. To be able to make this thing a really oppressive tank inside the game. Which is why I was in honorable mention in a previous video. Then on number two in this list shouldn't be that surprising. For a long time I've kept on telling you all that the Chronos Terminal Dreadnought Cruiser is... One of the best tanks in the entire game. And that's because it is one of the best tanks in the game. It works out for seeing is extremely optimal, especially for how I, I like to play with having the Lieutenant Commander Science for Gravity Well. Or, or if you want to do Florian's route of having the Lieutenant Commander Science ability itself for Photonic Officer 2, plus Track Beam Repulsors 1 at the, at the Lieutenant slot with the Duty Officer that makes Track Beam Repulsors actually pull instead of push. Uh, if that's the way that you want it, if, if you want a tank, especially in like an HSC, something like that, that's a little bit more optimal, frankly. Uh, Where I've seen is, is extremely well rounded overall. It's got four tactical consoles. It's got the best top console in the game, plus another console that gives you fire and cycle haste and gives you cooldowns on your bridge officer abilities. So it is pretty nice. Lucker like reconstruction for extra defenses, plus dual the cannons. If you really want to go that route for more DPS, a hang hangar bay, and a grand track fire still. It's still an awesome ship that all factions can use. If you're, if you're min maxing a lot of stuff, this is probably for KDF and, Rom and KDF and Light Romulans, this is probably your, your best um, option. Number one still is going to be the tier six od odysseys inside the game. You've got the flagship set, and <sighs> they're just really good. Um, I am personally leaning towards the science version just being better because you get sensor analysis as well, which which can help you with with, with taking down 
um, much harder to defeat tar targets, especially in certain TFOs. Uh, and and if, if you're with, with, with a group that isn't doing that much more DPS than you are, I mean, ideally, if you're in, in the ship and have optimal builds and things, you're going to be like, like Florian and be around the 100,000 damage per second anyway. And so if you have TPS guys that are only doing that much, a sensor analysis can definitely help make sure that certain targets die faster. Um, I, I, again, like the science one as, as one of the better builds. The tactical one is the one that a lot of people will, will go for if they want to do an ox to bat build for forging with, with, with their cooldowns. So the science one's better for passive cooldowns, though. You're, you are down to two tackle consoles with this ship, but with the amount of clicky consoles you already have with this, it's not going to be a really big deal. Alright, so with this last little part of the video, I'm going to go over, as, as there was a, a request for this really quick, of what I feel are, are the best promotion pack starships in the game. Obviously, obviously this, this depends. As I explain in this video, one of the better options is, is buying a Gemini Recon ship or Gemini Strike ship, depending upon what Bridge officer layout you like better. I think the recon's better, but that's just me personally. Uh, because it, it is one of the strongest PvP starships in the game. You can definitely argue the ones with, with battle cloaks are stronger. Um, if they have proper builds and such, like the fleet Burrell Bird of Prey. Uh, but additionally, after you buy, after, after buying this ship, if you have the Dominion 3 piece, it lets you also have pretty decent Gemini Vanguard starships to tank with in PvE, both the warship as well as the Dreadnought Cruiser. Which, which allows you to have a, a pretty sizable amount of um, value coming out, coming out of this. Having both a PvP as well as, as PvE op options with just buying one starship. The Forward Juggernaut, if you're going for pure, I want to do the most damage as possible, the Forward Juggernaut is going to be your best option. However, I mean, it's still not insanely optimal for tanking because you don't have command to attract fire. But you still can make it work because it is a miracle work, worker starship. So... There is definitely that. If, if you're going for a torpedo-based build, the Zinkethi Zentar is the best way to go. Miracle Warp Worker Command for its seating is definitely the most awful for torpedoes. Plus, it's got six tackle consoles. Well, five plus the, the Universal because it's, it's a Miracle Worker Starship, so it is pretty nice. Plus, it's got two hangers. The Enterprise Miracle Worker Flight Deck Cruiser is decent as, as a tanking starship. It's got two hanger anchor base, which is, which is unique for a ship with command track fire. Uh, in my opinion, the biggest values for this ship is the advanced phasers and the survival trait from the starship itself. I'm not fully convinced that the D7 is quite as valuable as, um, for the equivalent because, you, because there are spiral disruptors available inside the game already that you can unlock through just buying starships from the sea store and having those unlocked for your entire account. Back in the day, the Kronap Anorex was one of the better science ships in the game. It started to get outpaced by other starships inside the game. It's still a nice um, tank build for a niche audience if, if you're going to be relying upon the high base ratios for the hull and shields to tank with on, on, on the starship. If, that, if that's your thing, that might be the ship for you. In my opinion, though, the absolute best starship from promotion packs would be the Talis Temporal Warbird. I said I was going to skip and talk about this later, and now we're talking about it. This is the jack of all trades starship inside the game. Definitely, there are starships that, in any facet that this thing can do, other starships can do it better. However, with how many things this thing can actually do, I don't feel there's any starship that can really measure up to the starship. It can do PvP cannon builds, PvP beam builds, PvP torpedo builds, PvP science builds, and do PvE as well in all those types of things. Its ratios are also high enough as well, with its pretty good bridge after C, that you can also tank with science, with beams, and with cannons. I have tried it out. It works. It's surprising, but it works pretty well. It's got an enhanced bow cloak, plus the stuff, so it's, again, it's very good in PvP. The only things that it can't do is mine-oriented builds, because it doesn't have enough weapons in the rear, and it can't do pet-oriented builds, because it doesn't have hangers. Outside of those two limited circumstances, this ship can do everything else in the game that you want. So if you're someone that's willing to splurge and you're maybe not sure of what type of playstyle they want to do, or you want to keep on switching around and do everything with one character, and you're willing to pay a little bit to keep on switching, 
this might be the starship for you. Um, in my opinion, the classic TOS um, Warbird is also one of the cooler ships looking in the game, but I mean, this follows the philosophy that I feel personally that Star Trek should be going for, you know, the exploration, being new civilizations, learning and adapting. And this starship, because of its bridge off receding, its layout, its stats, it can learn and adapt and basically take on any situation without issue. And that is something that I don't really feel that any other ship in this game can really compare to. Yes, there are ones that are extremely good in PvE. There are ones that are extremely good in PvP. There are ones that are extremely good for science. This is the only one that I feel can bridge all those gaps together. Yes, it doesn't have a secondary deflector, so it's not going to be as good for science builds. No, it doesn't have Miracle Worker Command, so it's not as good with torpedo builds. Um, no, it doesn't have Cruiser Command, so it's not as good with tanking. You know, it doesn't have it doesn't have intelligence, so it's not necessarily as great with cannons. You know, it, but it still is workable and works decent enough with four science and four tackle consoles to do most of your types of builds that you want to do inside the game. It's also got enhanced battle cloak, so it's got some cool things and fun things you you, you can do with it too. But just having a battle cloak makes it still a menace in PvP. Plus, it's plus it's decently high stats considering that how fast this thing is. But, well, it said, that's just my personal opinion. I think this is the best ship in, in, in the game because of that. Feel free to discuss in, in the comments if you think that there is a different starship that, with, with all of the different things that it might be able to do, that it might be able to, to compete and be better than that ship. Anyway, feel free to let me know. Yeah, feel free to like and, and subscribe below um, if that's something that you really want, want to do. Technically, according to YouTube and analytics and such, Subscriptions don't actually help as much with um, stats as, as they used to in the old alg algorithms of, of, of YouTube. But obviously, if, if, if you want to get notifications for for new, for new videos, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell icon. And like, and, but 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 likes and comments do help um, make sure that these videos get circulated around more and more and more. We haven't gotten the stats yet, at least as of the making of this video for the Rising Corvette, which is my favorite ship actually in the entire game. I've been waiting to do that, but that wasn't released whenever, the, whenever I was waiting to do this video. But whenever that comes out, within 24 hours, I will have the video up. I've got basically the PowerPoint prepped. I, I just need to wait for the stats so I can plug in the stats. And then I can immediately start talking about the Rising Corvette and whatever change that, that they want to do with mechanics inside the game. Anyway, thank you all for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.